In this video, I'm going to show you 13 useful tips about Python date time objects that Marina Malay wrote about at the URL shown here. The first thing Marina shows us, the first useful tip, is how to create three different types of objects date, time, and date time. And she starts by importing the date time library. The next thing she does is create a date time object. She signs that to now using the now method and creates a date object on the now object and a moment variable also on the now object to get a time object. So if we look at those now we can see that that's a date time object. Today that's a date object and moment that's a time object. And it looks a little different if you print them. Oops use the capital P there, print now. You can see we get a nicely formatted date, print today. Again, that gets the date part of it, and print moment gets the time part. The second useful tip is that she shows us that if we already have a date and a time, we can create a date time object from that. So she calls that now, I'll call it now too. And we use the combine method to combine our date object and our time object. And we see now too is also a date time object, just like now. The third thing she shows us is how to use the time delta method to get a new date time. So we can get yesterday by subtracting from today date time dot time delta one. That's one day. Now if we look at yesterday, you can see that yesterday is a date time, but it's June 1st instead of June 2nd. Today was June 2nd. We can also get a time delta object by subtracting one date from another. And you can see that's a time delta of one, meaning one day. All right, we saw how we could use the date method of a date time object to create a new date. We can also use the date method of date time itself to create a new date. And what we do is we put in the year, we'll do January 1st, the month and the day. And that gives us that date object. If for some reason you don't remember or want to change the order of the arguments that you pass in, you can use the keys. and that will create the same object. The time method is similar. Let's create time objects, date time dot time, and that gives us a time of midnight. Let's assign that to a variable and then print it. You can see it's midnight. We can also spe specify the hours. And like with date, we can use keys. The sixth tip Marina gives us is how to create a date time all at once by passing in arguments. In this case, the time is set to zero, zero because we didn't pass it in. Let's pass in a time this time. And if we print that same thing, I'm gonna copy and paste it. I didn't assign it to a variable, but I can just copy and paste. We print it, you can see it prints out a more nicely formatted date and time. And of course we can use keys too. This time I'll assign it to a variable. And we'll print my date time. Tip number seven is how to change one date time object to another using the replace method. So we have my date time up above Let's create another date time by replacing the year and the month. Oh, I missed the replace method there. Let's try that again. And you can see it's still 630 or 1830. It's still the 24th, but we have a new month. January and a new year, 2014.
tip number eight is to get the epic. January 1st, 1970. Epic gets date time dot date time dot UTC from timestamp. And then we just set it to zero. That's the epic. You can see if we print epic, it's January 1st, 1970 at midnight. Tip number nine is to get the number of days between the epic and now, or the number of days that have passed since the epic. Remember, we have the now variable. In 16,588 days, 11 hours, 36 minutes, and 24.236846 seconds have passed since the epic. We can use the time delta days property to see how many days have passed, and we can find out the seconds as well. That's not the total number of seconds that's pa that have passed. That's just the number of seconds in addition to the number of days. If we want to get the total seconds, we'd use the total seconds method. And that's a lot of seconds. Let's assign that total seconds to seconds. And tip number 11 shows us how we can get now the current date time from the number of seconds that have passed since the epic. And that gives us the current date time. Remember we have today stored in a variable, that's a date. We can get a nice pretty string version of that using just the string method. You can see that gives us a string in the form of the full year, followed by the full month, followed by the full day. Notice that string date can be split on the dash into a list. And then we can loop through that list and see the different elements within it. Using that information, we can convert a string like this back into a date object. And you see we have our date object again. What this is doing is it's looping through the string, split into a list, and unpacking that list into three different elements, the year, the month, and the day and then passing those elements to the date method to create a date object. Okay, the 13th and final tip that Marina shows us is how to create a nicely formatted string from a date using string f time. It looks like this. We use the month, day, and full year directives. You can see all the different directives for date parts at the URL shown here. And there you go. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Marina for letting us use her post as a basis for this video. Check out her blog at the URL shown here for other posts on Python and Django and other related topics.